In this video, we're going to do an extension question on functions. In the question, we're asked to prove that f of x, which is equal to alpha x plus beta over x minus alpha, where x cannot be equal to alpha, is self-inverse for all alpha and beta. If this is self-inverse, we can say that the f of f of x will be equal to x. This now is the property of a self-inverting function. So what we can do is set up now a composite function, f of f of x. So we do f and put it through f. What I'm going to have here now is alpha, and then we're going to have now alpha x plus beta over x minus alpha. So just setting this up now, so every time I see x, I'm going to feed in alpha x plus beta over x minus alpha. So there's our alpha x plus beta over now x minus alpha, and then we're going to have plus beta. That now is the numerator. In the denominator, we've got x, which becomes alpha x plus beta over now x minus alpha, and then we have minus alpha. At this stage, I'm going to multiply through by the linear factor of x minus alpha. If I do that in the numerator, I'm going to have alpha multiplied by alpha x plus beta. Then I'm going to have plus beta multiplied by x minus alpha. In the denominator, I'm going to have alpha x plus beta. Then I'll have minus alpha multiplied by x minus alpha. If we expand the brackets and tidy up, we're going to have now in the numerator alpha squared x plus alpha beta. Then we'll have plus beta x minus beta alpha, which we can write as alpha beta. In the denominator now, expanding the bracket, we'll have alpha x plus beta minus alpha x plus alpha squared. So if we consider what's going to cancel, we've got plus alpha beta minus alpha beta. We've got alpha x minus alpha x. So in the numerator, I've got alpha squared x plus beta x. In the denominator, just rewriting alpha squared plus beta. I can factor an x out of the numerator. That's going to have x alpha squared plus beta. And in the denominator, now I have alpha squared plus beta. We can see the alpha squared plus betas cancel, and that's going to simply leave me x. Therefore, we can say the f of f of x will be equal to x for all alpha and beta. So we've done that now by simply using composite functions. In the next part, we're asked to find the values of x which map onto themselves. So essentially what we're saying here is the f of x is equal to x. So we can simply set the left-hand side equal to x. We will have now alpha x plus beta over now x minus alpha. Multiplying both sides now by the denominator, we're going to have x and then we'll have x minus alpha and that will be equal to alpha x plus beta. We've got a quadratic in x, so we expand the brackets. x squared minus alpha x is equal to alpha x plus beta. At this stage, I'm going to subtract alpha x from both sides. So we have x squared minus 2 alpha x is equal to beta. I'm going to complete the square on the left-hand side. You could, of course, subtract beta from both sides, but we're only ever going to end up adding it to the other side anyway. So completing the square, I've got x minus alpha, all squared minus alpha squared is equal to beta. Adding alpha squared to both sides, x minus alpha, all squared, will be equal to alpha squared plus beta. Taking the square root of both sides, x minus alpha, will be equal to plus or minus the square root of alpha squared plus beta. Then simply adding the alpha to both sides, x will be equal to alpha plus or minus the square root of alpha squared plus beta. So for values of x, so here we've got the values and we can see quite clearly our quadratic has two possible solutions. It's alpha plus or minus the square root of alpha squared plus beta. So you can have alpha plus the square root of alpha squared plus beta, or alpha minus the square root of alpha squared plus beta. So all we've done is simply set x equal now to the function, as this will map itself back onto x, and we've gone ahead and solved the quadratic by completing the square. 